Come on, I'm telling you, somebody, somebody's breaking stuff in your home city right now. Somebody's breaking principalities. Somebody's breaking strongholds in the city where you pastor. You're doing it right now in the very presence of God. Come on, let that intercession and travail flow through you. But in your mind, I want you to picture your city. I want you to picture people that you believe God's going to save. I want you to picture strongholds that you believe God's going to break while you pray in the Holy Ghost. Picture them in your mind. Take a picture of that. Oh, God. He got a Atabaya <laughs> Ikataya robo kuri atanamaya tabaya raboriya tarabaya 
Atabaya reaborre atarava kaya raborre atarabo korea. Elabaya rabo korea atarabaya tamaya tabaya tabaya rabaya da da da. Irabo yere atanamori atalaba. Ia kalabo shiara rabo korea atarava. A kalabo ia tarabo korea lava. And as soon as Zion travailed, and as soon as Zion travailed. And as soon as Zion travailed, something's going to come to birth. Something's going to be born. Arabaya re arraba kari etori arraba re etori arraba ya arraba ya arabo re arrabo kore arraba ya arabo re arama ya arraba e karaba re arabo kore arraba ya akaraba re arrabo kore arraba ya akare arraba ki arro re arraba ya e karaba ye bo bi aba ye to batana. He cut a yanda by yanda by yanda by yellow, okay, am I a oh, I? A kaya to yata ye kanda ye to rehaba ye no boy, I. A tayata ye be a toto no kiata la kayata by yata boy, I. Ya kataboya da badi ando raba namaya raba kia to rehaba ye. Ya batamaya rabo korea taraba ya raba ya. Ya kanda bori hataraba ya rabori hataraba, hatama ya rabo kori hataraba ya raba ya. Ya kanda ba ya rabo kori hataraba ya. Ya kara bori hataraki ya rabo kori hataraba, hakari ya rabo kori haba ya oyatana. Haraba ya rabo kori hataraba kaya rabo kori hataraba ya raba ya. Ya bari ya tori ya bari ya tori ya ba ya raba ya ba nama ya tana ma ya raba ya tara ba ya raba ila ba ya raba ya raba ya rara ba ya raba ya rara ba ya. Oh God, oh God. Raba ya raba ya rara ba ko. Shataba kaya raba kia tori hata raba ya raba, raba ya rabo kuri hata raba ya raba ya, ataba ya rabo kia tana ma ya rabo ri hata raba ya, araba ya rabo ri hata raba kia rabo, ya kalabo shoto bo kuri hata raba ya ta, elaba ya rabo ri hata raba kia rabo ya, ika raba ri hata ri hata raba kata ba ya rabo ri hata raba ya. Alabaya rabo ki arabaya rabo ri arabaya ka ya arabaya. Shoko no mo ya bata na ma ya ba ya di ambata na yoko tori ata. Ata na ma ya taba ya ki aloto oshi ane lobo ri ata ni ano mai. Eka taba ya taba ya taba ya tabo ya di ato bo ri abata na ma ya to. Ye tata na ma cha toko no ni adaba ye toko ni abai. Arabari he tori hata rabaya. He kalabaya rabori hata rabaya rabori. He ki alabaya riabori hata rabaka ya rabori hata rabai. He tabaya rabori hata rabaya rabori haka rabaya rabaya tai. Rabo ye di ata rabo ri ata raba ya rabo ri ata raba ya rabo. Ilabo ye bi andu bi ande uturia bai. Ya ta yu ni ata ne uto no bori ai. Iki alai ti uria be bi uto. Ya ta ri ai iki alu me ri andu. Shati e nai e ti o no, ande e lo bori ai o koto, shata le bor ande ti ai, e ti ando ri atana yo a. 
Ile alabo riandele kiai. Yata nama yata ba yara ba yara ra ba yara ba yata. Yara ba yara ba yara ra ba yara ba yara ra ba. Ile ba yara ba yara ra ba yara ba yara ra ba ya. Yara ba yara hesia no koto ha hia mai. Yata na yata ne ko ne na alebo oto. Sade ando akande ekyo ande akana usho bo yai. Ya te a ya o shane e o ko e ya te a ando bo ya tai. Ya kata ala bo shatana ma ya rabo. Shatana ma ya rabo ya tai e. Atana ma ya rabo ya ri ya ro ro ri ya ta rabo ya da. Atana ma ya rabo ri ya ta rabo ki anda rabo ho ri ya tai. Ataba ha shatana ma ka da ba ya. Atalabo hashi atanamo kuri hatai. Atabayarabo ki atanamo ki atanamo hi hatai. Aye yo no to riandele bo tai. Shatalaba kaya nama. Yatana shota kane. Shatalebo kondori hatai. Eti alamo shiye. Shei ni on to nai shon dai ki li o tai. Ele ili o shi ande ilo bo o to ni a tai. Ande i a ta ele a to ni a shi a ko ni a te i bo ti ai. Ata na ma ya raba ya rabo ri a ta. Shoto ri a ta raba kata va ya ta. Ila ha shei ki no to na ma ye. Yatana yata ye todri tante. Kala ate ye she kiano mo e shiana mo hi ate. Atana ma ye tobo hi atana ya. Atari atara ki andara bo tori atai. Aye ki atana ma ya rabo tori atai. Aye uriane urabarabaye. Yatana ya yosho ne yotana Yaya hei ki ayo bai yei ti ayo ko Sana ke yatana yei yotono riyata la bai yei Yatana ya raka ya naba ya raba ya riya boya Atama ya raba riya torri hata raba ya taboya Atama ya raba riya tarabu kurri haba raba ya boya Atama ya raba ki atori hata raba ya taba ya. Ataba ya raba hori hata raba ka ya raba hi atoro. Ya talaba ya ki atone ya ka ya tone ya bari atoro. Alebi ya chondo kore ya taraba ki atori hata raba ka ya. Araba ya raba hori hata raba ka tabo hi ata ye. Ala ye lo mo ya ye di a do mo ya di a ba ye. Aye o ya na ye i a ko na ye aye o ti a na. Aye 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 aye. Ala ba ya ra ba di a ta ra ba ya ra bo i a ra ra ba ya ra ba. Ana na e bo di a o ye i so ni e ko ya na ye i a ta ye i a. Ata ba ya ra bo i a ta ra ba ya ra bo i. Arabaya rabori, arabaya rabori, arabaya rabori. Ika rabori, arabaya rabori, atanaba keno. Ela ba ya rabori, atanaje kuri ande. Elo kuri atala ba ya rabori, etori ataraba ya. Arabaya rabori, arabaya rabori, etori ataraba ya rabori edi ande. Loto no masha ye ki ano ta ne. La pa ta ne yo ka ye to ri ta ye ho. A ta ne ki ta ta ye ko no ba re ha ba ta ba ye. I ra ba ya ra bo hi ra ra ba ri ha da la bo hi eri anda. I ka ra bo hi a shande ki li a no bo ri ha ta na ya da ba. I can't need you so damn bad. 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 I can't need
Yelandre Boriatana Yeto Koreatana Nadavayaria Boriatanaba Kataba Nikiala Boriatanaba Kadi El Toria Barabo Yelande Boriatabaria Toria Tarabaka Ye Yenamoye Kiala Baye Nianda Ye Koreata Neotai Ilama yarra boko tori atana yata. Iki atana yata boye iti atana boko tori yata. Ilata yanama yata baye i. Itabari eto raboko raba. Ikatabo shoto no mo shoto boko raba. Ilata yanamo yatana ye. Oh, Ratana Maye, E Calaboi Ataraboi Ediato, E Barraba Yarabo Cotura Maye, E Manaye Miatore Andelabo, E Tamaya Rabo Cotoria Tarabaya, Oh, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to God, 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 anaye korabaya rabana. Ana ye koto nuri abata ne, etana ma ye robori ataraba katabai, atabai arabo koto ri atarabaya, atana ma ye atora atana ye to. Oh, my God, Hallelujah. Mighty, mighty, mighty God. Mighty, mighty, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hayasha, Yashi, Uncle Hai. Aye kia asho a kyande e kiato Atana aye tianda akana aye tana moho Arabaya rabori ataraboko tori atarabakata baye Yabarabo shianamaka ye Yalama ya rabaka ya toboye kiandura Oh, Jesus. Hey, mighty God. Hey, mighty God. Jesus, oh God, the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Great is the Lord. Hallelujah is to God. Alabaya la boya tana ke yoto no ra. Ana ya reiti ando korea tana yeto. Araba ya reya torea andele boye ki alatai. 
Hala yalo ni aiti ando shane ki atana meyo. Haraba ye ki alo do riande di anda ba ye ki au shai. Yata ne ye yo ro na ye yo ko na ye. Haraba ya raba ya tori ya taraba ya ra. Ya la ba ya tori ya taraba ka ya rabo. Atana ye ki alo rabana ye. Oshia ye lo raba tena she ki alai. Ila lebo ya bare. Ene a raba ye o bare ya. Shunda ye ka ye. Ala ne yo ko raba ane. Aye ki aye ki aye o to dia bai. Ande ye ki ana ye ko. Shuba ande ki ando rabana ye. Adaba ya rabo ki ara rabo ko to ra. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. I honor you, Jesus. Could we raise our hands all over this house and let's just one more time from the depth of our hearts, let's give thanks unto the King. Let's give honor unto the King. Oh, who is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the Son of Man that thou visitest him? Oh God, we are unworthy. Oh God, we are unworthy. But we thank you for your visitation. We thank you for your visitation. We thank you for your visitation, oh God, the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's give some, let's give some praise by clapping our hands and shouting with our voice unto the Lord. Jesus' name. Why don't you hug somebody beside you and tell them this is the way it ought to be. This pleases the Holy Ghost. I said this pleases the Holy Ghost. Uh, when his body can come together as one uh, and he flow through them in unity, I'm going to tell you something. Things change in the spirit world in situations just like we have been involved in right now. Cities are changed. Lives are changed. Uh, strongholds are broken. Demonic powers and principalities are brought low. 
in this kind of situation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can sit down. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Well, I'm beginning to understand a little better why it uh, felt so funny when I was trying to get precise direction from the Lord, and it just kept feeling kind of jumbled up. And I thought, what in this world? Am I out to lunch before breakfast or what? And um, But the Lord, he had a plan. Just like he's got a plan in your city. I said, just like he's got a plan in your city. Please remember when he sent out those 70, two by two, he said he sent them into every place where he himself would come. He didn't send you there just because it was, didn't have a church. He sent you there because he plans on coming himself and he wanted you to get it ready for his arrival. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, it's awesome working with Jesus. <laughs> I said it's awesome working with Jesus. Woo. Oh, God. Oh, God. So anyway, um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit here. and I don't think I'm going to be a long time. I really don't. Um, what time... Brother Dylan, Sister Dylan, somebody, Brother Cooper. What time do they have lunch ready over there, okay? Does anybody know? They all left to go eat lunch? Okay. They have ready at 1.30. Pardon? Okay, 1.30? Thank you, Sister. Thank you. Let's give Sister D a hand right now. All right, one thirty. <clears throat> so, um, anyway, I, I I noticed that this morning I I kept trying to, you know, I kept trying to say, okay, now what are you what are we gonna do here today, and. Um, it just it just never would completely it's like bits and pieces and stuff and I thought, Oh dear Jesus. But you know, Jesus, um I don't we never come to a place in him that he don't want us to retain the ability to walk by faith. That is a lifelong situation and he's not gonna change that. There's going to be some walking by faith, uh, and he wants that in a part of our everyday life. You know, one of the things that I am so, so, so thankful uh, to be able to be a part of this meeting because of, one of the things is because of the fact that we can do what we just got through doing. I've been to 27 conferences about prayer and never seen this much prayer done. <clears throat> Isn't that a novel idea to pray at a conference? Isn't that? I mean, that's a little unusual, isn't it? But most of the time we hear about it and we talk about it and we hear we get seminars on it and paperwork on it, but they don't do it much. But I'm thankful to be a part of something where they actually can do it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And so I'm so thankful to be a part of this meeting and I love Brother and Sister Dylan, these great, great people, and um, thankful for the men that God has allowed me to be able to fellowship with and minister alongside. And um, I feel like that the two men that I minister with year by year are much greater men than myself, and I, I mean that honestly, I really do. And I have great, great respect for them, great, great respect. And you need to have great respect for men of God like that. Praise God. Praise God. Because 
Those men are taking years of stuff that it cost them dearly to learn. So much of the stuff. I listen to Brother Morgan as he preaches, and, and so much of the stuff and revelation and, and authority and all that, the strength and the Holy Ghost and all that, that that God has allowed to reside with him, it came from pastoring 30 miles from me in Hell's Kitchen. And you know what? You got it for free. You didn't have to go through 10 or 15 years of that in business. But everything he gleaned out of it and distilled it down, he brought it and gave it to you in the Holy Ghost. And you better not take it lightly, baby, because if you take it lightly, God will say, well, maybe they need to learn it firsthand. And he could promise, I promise you he could tell you, you don't want to have to learn it firsthand. Yeah. Because we talked, we talked often, often, many times a week for 10 years over there. And um, I'm telling you that Jesus, Jesus is, um, I told him, I said, well, you just ran off and left me. And he just, he claims that it took me longer to learn the lessons and God's still working on me. So <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, I am really very, very thankful to be able to be a part of this. And I want to share anything and everything that Jesus has given me because in my opinion, as I've said before, you're the most precious people in the eyes of God that exist upon the planet. I'm glad three of y'all believe that. <clears throat> hey, is there something wrong with saying amen? amen? Don't you see yourself that way? I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to tell you something. I believe that Jesus counts me as somebody special to him. That's not arrogance. That's Bible. That's Bible. That's Bible. He said, I'm part of something that's a unique treasure to him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let's see, where was Brother Wright at? He was quoting the Beatitudes, I believe, wasn't he? About hunger and thirst. I think that's the last thing I heard him say. Well, let's just start there. How about that? Let's start there. Matthew chapter number 5. Since um, that sounds like a good place to start, since that's where the Lord told me to start. That's the last thing he was doing. Now, you don't have to stand up because I'm going to read a little bit and stop him and, and uh, chase a few rabbit trails and whatever. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 1, And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I want God to be able to find in me Something that the Bible said would come with a blessing, and that is someone that is poor in spirit. Now, it's not talking about poverty. It's not talking about the lack of funds. It's not talking about a situation like that, but it's talking about our attitude inside about God and the things of God. Speaks more of a humility-type situation. You can tell by looking at people most of the time whether they're rich or poor by the way they act. And you see somebody that struts like they're the cock of the walk and, and that uh, you know that they think they're just a three or four cuts above everybody else. Do you know the Bible said that God resists the proud? That literally means he is hostile against, uh, he is an enemy to the proud, uh, but he gives grace unto the humble. I'm going to tell you something. I fear God. I fear God. I see people running headlong. It's, like, it's literally the way some people live. I think, dear God, you'd be better off running through a forest with your eyes closed as fast as you could run. Because I'm going to tell you, you're going to run into something, and it's going to knock you sideways. I see him, I see him with no regard for God whatsoever. Just running, going, ripping through life, and I'm going, oh, God. I'm going to tell you something. Every, I try my best by the help and grace of God. Everything I do, when I get ready to do it or think, I, I go like this. I go and try to feel 
see if he's got any feeling about it. Like Brother Wright said, I, I process everything I know about that book. Do that search to see, because I fear God. Blessed. Somebody say blessed. Blessed, blessed are the poor in spirit. If you will, keep that up there, sister. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Next verse. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. You know, sometimes we mourn and we don't realize that even in our allowing ourselves to mourn, that in that God said there is a blessing. Do you know that Jesus had to send a man of God to me one time to say, you better quit putting it off and get to mourning. My house burned in, on Christmas Day of 03. The audacity of God. <laughs> now, you know, that, that's when, when, when I hear about people that died on anniversaries and birthdays and Christmases and holidays. Oh, God, it just makes it double bad because from then on, you remember, because that day, it's already, you know, kind of set apart, but then it really becomes a stigma because every day, well, you know what? Christmas Day has never been the same since 03. But you know what? I was going to be Mr. Faith. Mr. Charles Atlas Faith Guy. Arnold Schwarzenegger Faith Guy. You know, I'm going to muscle up and do the faith thing. And that's all well and good. You need to do that. You need to have some faith. But I'm going to tell you, I pushed it to the extreme to where I had never allowed myself to mourn. Chester Wright called me one time on the telephone. Thank God that I've got men in my life that can call me on the telephone and say, this is what you, sir, need to do. Can I tell you something? Any time that you get so big that you have no one that can call you on the phone and uh, rattle your cage a little bit and straighten up your stuff a little bit, it's just a matter of time until you crash and burn. You're running blind. You're running eyes closed through a forest, okay? And when you fall out of that ugly tree, you're going to hit every limb before you get to the ground. And you're going to be messed up by the time you get there. You hear me? I watched other people that they, they would allow people to do that, but it could only be someone like Tom Barnes. If Tom Barnes didn't call their number out of the clear blue and said, I was praying this morning, and the Lord gave me your phone number. Said, okay, I can hear it now. You know what Paul said? He said, I am instructed in all things. You want to be smart? You want to have wisdom? Why don't you let God start talking to you in something other than a booming voice of prophecy out of heaven from somebody that gets up in the morning and prophesies over their cereal? Listen, baby, he wants you to learn that there's more ways you can get a word from God than from somebody saying, Thus saith the Lord. I'm telling you, the Lord has spoke to me in many different ways. Uh, I don't want to do what the Bible says in Job 33, where it says, God speaketh once, uh, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. I want to be sensitive to the voice of God. So Brother Wright called me and he said, you know what? He said, your house burned over a year, year and a half ago, whatever it was, at that point in time. And he said, you have never allowed yourself to grieve over it. Well, he, that was true, because I was blessed God every time the subject came up or the thought of it came up. I'm telling you, God, and boy, I'd start speaking faith. And you need to do that. But I'm going to tell you something. I was missing a blessing. I was missing a blessing. And there's some of you home missionaries that you're trying to keep it in the closet, but it's the elephant in the front room. You have never grieved over what God has allowed to happen in your life, and it was not something the devil did. It was something God allowed, and he wants you to get that blessing right there. And you'll never get that blessing right there until you allow yourself to mourn and to grieve. Can I remind you that Jesus did do some grieving? So, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Next verse. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, meekness, you know, that's, that's not a subject you hear preached on very much anymore. 
You just don't. You know, when's the last time you heard a, a message or a Bible study taught or preached about meekness? But you know what? There's a blessing in meekness. I believe there ought to, be, ought to be a desire in every one of us to strive for meekness from God. I believe that people that know us, they ought to know that there's more than a, than a frothing at the mouth apostolic preacher over there. There is a meekness in his spirit. There's a gentleness in his spirit. There's a kindness in his spirit. There's a Jesus-like nature that emanates from his life. I want that blessing right there. I want that blessing. You know what? You know what the Lord will do for the meek? When you have a meek spirit and attitude, you know what will happen? When somebody starts messing with you, he'll take them out. Did you hear me? He will take them out. Unless he sent them to rub something off of your hide that was a little thorny spot somewhere. You know, there's some people, Brother... Brother Dylan, that I love them, and I reach over, to, and every time it's like trying to pet a porcupine. I don't care how I approach him. I'm telling you, I'm going to get stuck. I mean, just wherever. I don't care if you pat them here or pat them here. You're going to get stuck somehow or another. You know, I don't want to be that way. I don't want to be that way. You know, the Bible says that that wisdom that comes from above is easily entreated. That means it's easy to talk to. If you're hard to talk to, you need to learn about that wisdom that comes down from above. If you're so right that you've got to make sure you put that point down and put ten exclamation marks behind it before you can ever discuss another, you need to learn about a meekness that comes down from above that's easily entreated. I want that blessing. Next, next verse. I want that blessing, I'm telling you. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. And we're a little more familiar with that one. For they shall be filled. We're into that hunger thing. And, and we like that, you know, as, as long as it don't include fasting. Um, we do that all right. <laughs> hunger and thirst after righteousness. As long as we can have plenty to drink and plenty to eat. We'd have. But you know what? I want that blessing right there. That blessing will do something for you that nothing else on the planet will do. Can I tell you this today? Hunger will always make a pathway. I don't care if you're cross-eyed, bow-legged, buck-toothed, and have a third-grade education. I'm telling you, if you're hungry for God, so help me before God, He's going to make a pathway for you. Your hunger's going to bring you into the very presence of God. Come on, if you believe that, clap your hands to the Lord. I need a little bit more money. Oh, God. Somebody say, I want that blessing. So listen, you know what? You need to pray that God would give you hunger. Make me hungry for the things of God. Now, I don't know. Maybe, maybe all you folks wake up every morning and just, I mean, when you wake up, you're going, and the covers are kicking down the bottom. You know, I don't wake up that way. I wake up and I go, no, actually it's this, because my right eye, my left eye is drier than my right eye, and so I open my look over to, well, I got one of them deals that, that, that puts the deal up on the ceiling, so I can just go, and it's up there on the ceiling, I can see what time it is, and, and I, don't, I don't jump out of bed talking in tongues, okay? Especially since my wife moved that ottoman over there. It took me a couple nights to get that. She scooted it over beside the bed, and I come out of bed one night and liked to broke my neck here lately. So, uh, you know, so you know, I don't, I don't get up like that, okay? But I'm going to tell you something. There's also the very real fact that I've got to deal with that I don't feel like praying every day. I'm not hungry for God on the surface every day. But you know what? There's a blessing in hunger. So you know what I've got to do? I've got to cultivate a hunger. And you can cultivate a hunger for the things of God. And here's one of the ways you can do it. Jesus, send a spirit of hunger for the things of God into my heart today.
Make me hungry for the things of the Spirit today. Make me hungry for your word today. Make me hungry for fellowship with you today. And you know what happened, darling? He's going to start sending a blessing uh, that only comes as a result uh, of hungering and thirsting after God. And you shall be filled. Yeah, you, you know, it sounds a little goofy to me when I do it. But you know what? I've, I've had to pray, Jesus, help me to love you. I wasn't saying it because I didn't love him. I was just saying it because I didn't feel the strength of the love that I need to feel that I want to feel. You better learn to do that in your home with your wife and your husband. Because you know what? You don't get up every morning and just say, oh, baby, kiss me. You're not in love every morning, okay? Oh, maybe you are. But you know what? There have been a couple times in 33 years that I've been married to my first wife. 33 years. That I'm going to tell you something. I just didn't feel that gushing, romantic feeling that I'd felt a lot of the time in 33 years. But you know what? I didn't take that as a sign I needed to go find another heifer to fall in love with either. You know why a lot of fellers fell out of the boat? It's because when that little feeling of, of romantic kind of left or ebbed for a little bit, instead of asking God to renew it, they started looking around. Hey, can I tell you something, baby? You here to hear me. That book says, A dishonor and a reproach shall he get. His reproach shall never be wiped away. So you know what? You need to find somebody that you trust enough that you can call them up on the phone and say, listen, I'm struggling this week. I'm telling you, I'm feeling temptation to commit sin, and I don't want to be destroyed. I don't want you to show a hand. I don't want anybody to see a hand. But you just tell me how many of you got somebody in your life today you could call and do that and tell them that and feel safe doing it. Don't show a hand. No, please. Okay? But you know what? We need some folks that are trustworthy. Amen. Do you hear me, home mission? You want somebody to trust you? You've got to be trustworthy yourself. I'm telling you, there's men on this planet that I could ring their telephone and tell them whatever it was that I was struggling with. And I could lay that phone back down without one second's worrying. I wonder if they're going to tell somebody. I want to know, baby. I know they're trustworthy. I can trust them. We need to cultivate a faithful spirit. We need to cultivate a trustworthy spirit. So... Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness. You feel that feeling going away? You know what you need? God help me to fall in love with her all over again. Renew my love for her all over again. Can I tell you something? He'll do it. I'm in love right now with that woman of mine. Whew. Right now. Well, it wasn't just absence. I'm telling you, I was in love with her before I left. I'm going to tell you that right now. So I want that blessing. Next verse. Blessed are the merciful. For they're going to get mercy. Hey, listen, if you ever get around somebody that they're quick to pull the trigger, stop getting around them. Get away from them. Because I'm going to tell you, it's just a matter of time until it's going to fall on them. And you better hope it ain't big enough. If you're close to them, it's going to hit you too. And your biggest tithe payer comes up to you and says, Brother Eads, when are you going to do something about that lady? And you're trying to extend mercy. And you're trying to be patient. You're trying to be long-suffering. And you're trying to do what Jesus did. You're trying to cover for them as best you can. He did cover for Judas. Read the story of the Last Supper in the book of John. He covered for the dude. The only one he trusted with that information was that disciple called the Beloved, who was named John, whose head was right there on his chest. He's the only one that knew. Peter asked. 
I don't think Peter ever found out because he had a sword. And that guy got out of there without his head missing. I know he's capable of cutting heads. All he tried later that night to get one. Got an ear, but he was going for the head, I'm going to tell you. And you know what? Jesus never let Peter know, even though he said, John, ask him who's going to betray him. And Jesus said, it's him that I give, that I dip the sop and give it to him. Well, I don't think Peter heard that. that dear God, there was 12 of them, so you got to... You got a twelve. You know, if you're sitting down at a table that's got enough for twelve people, that's a long situation there. And when you got a guy right there, you don't have to say very loud. When well, I'm fixing to give the sop to. And then he turns and he gives it to Judas. And here's what he says: Whatever you do, do quickly. You know what? John didn't get him. Grab, jump up and grab him in the headlock. Come on, Pete, get him, get him quick. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. You know what the Bible does say? That all the guys around that table, you know what the rest of them thought? He's going to get something for the supper. He's going to give something to the poor. and He's, he's, he's doing that. Jesus covered for that guy so he could fulfill the act of betrayal. You know, like you and I would do. Well, come on now. Hey, come on, that's why we're the great home missionaries that we are, because that's what we'd do. Hallelujah. <laughs> Knowing they're going to betray us, and we still cover for them. I'm kind of more into that mark them sometimes, you know. <laughs> Let's get the big magic mark and put an X right there on our forehead. That's the one right there. Jesus didn't do that. You know why? Because he was merciful. I said he was merciful. I said he was merciful. Can I tell you something? I want that blessing right there. I want that blessing right there. I got a boy who just turned 18 years old. And you know what? As good as his mama is, and as much as God allowed him to take after her, I'm telling you, he's not going to walk right every day of his life. But when he bobbles and when he stumbles, I want the God of heaven to say, Hey, his daddy gave mercy. His daddy gave mercy. And I'm going to give it to his boy. He extended it to somebody. I'm going to return it to him. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. You better be merciful. You better be merciful. You better be merciful. And I know that Bible says them that sin, rebuke openly before all that others may fear. And you know there's a time and a place for that. I've been pastoring 24 years in one place, and I've done it three times. And the last time was just a couple, two, three months ago. And you know what? I hated it every time. I hated it every time. It literally, I did not want to do it, but I knew it was the Word of God. And the Lord left me no option in that particular situation. And I sought another option. You better not look for judgment first. You better not look for a reason to do that first. Uh, you better extend every search uh, that you can feel and send out uh, to try to find a way that you can show mercy. Because there's a blessing there. There's a blessing there. Oh, I can't tell you how many times that I'm telling you I knew God showed me what was fixing to happen or what had happened. And I'm telling you, I, I got him by the throat, right there in my hand. And all of a sudden, the Lord just, he kind of goes like this, Psst, remember. I said, you know what, I'm going to help you. I'm going to pray with you. God's going to restore you. And I remember the weaknesses and the failures and the stumbles and the falls that I've been involved in. And I want mercy. And I'm going to plant it. And for hundreds of years after David was buried in the ground, the Lord was still saying, because of your father David. Because of your father David. I'm talking an idol worshiping. A, I'm talking a God, a godless bunch of people. And the Lord was still saying, because of my servant David. Because of my servant David. Uh, because of my servant David. What I want to know is, how much mercy have you got in your bank account? How 
some of you, you've been putting it away for your babies and your grandbabies. I'm telling you, I want that blessing. I want that blessing. I want that blessing. Now, I'm a student. I'm a student. I like to learn from everybody. I've learned stuff from people. They weren't only not the sharpest tool in the tray. I'm not sure they's in the tray. But I've learned stuff from them. I'm telling you, yeah. And you better get to the place that you can learn stuff from other people. So you know what? I'm a student. I've watched people that are real quick to judge and real quick to pull the trigger when they've got the goods on somebody. And I've watched it come back to their own house over and over and over and over again. Sometimes it's hard to remember, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, by the grace of God, to remember it. It says, with whatever measure you measure others, it's going to be measured back to you again. So just remember the next time you're dealing with somebody, I don't care if it is to placate or, or, or to soothe your greatest tide payer and somebody that's all huffed up. You, you know what? You don't have to tell them they're an idiot, even if they are one. You don't have to tell them that. But give them the word of God. Say, listen, we got. I want that blessing right there. It says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. I want that blessing right there. Next verse. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I want that blessing. You know what I found out the other day? Or here, I'll tell you the other day. A month or two or three ago, they're always God's always doing stuff, and sometimes I think I'm weird because of some of the stuff he the way he does it. But anyway, uh, I just just for some reason I was going along, and I had this had this goofy thought come in my mind, and it was not something sure not something that was going to lead me anywhere, but the wrong way. And so just out of the when it came, it just popped through my mind, and I just said. Jesus, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, O God, in thy sight. And just like that, that thought was gone. I said, well, cool. <laughs> so the next time something like that happened, you know what? As soon as it showed up, I said, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, Lord, in thy sight. And it's gone. I've been using that, darling. I've been using that. Some of y'all need to use that. If you want to have a pure heart, that is. How many of you understand that the mind is the stomach of the soul? So whatever you feed in your mind is going to be the condition of your soul. So you know what? I want a pure heart. I want a pure soul. I want a pure spirit. And to do that, I'm going to have to gauge what comes in there and guard what comes in there. And you know what? I want to see him. I don't want somebody else just telling me about him. I'm not interested in somebody else saying, let me tell you what God did. Uh, let me tell you how God showed out on my behalf. I want to get a pure enough heart that he lets me see him for myself. I want that blessing right there. Next verse. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now, you thought just talking in tongues made you a child of God, didn't you? You thought just getting baptized in Jesus' name made you a child of God, didn't you? Well, I'm going to tell you something, darling. There's another component that goes into being a child of God, and that is being a peacemaker. Do you know, friend of mine, the only way you're going to have peace with others in your world is to make it. You know, I go to these weddings and these anniversaries and all that business, and uh, y'all will figure out I like chocolate cake, okay? But I'll go to them, I'll go to them things, and they got them big old cakes come from Walmart or somewhere. 
Listen, I've taken, man, I, I, boy, they got that big ice on there, and I'm thinking, this might be good. So I cut me a piece of it. I was somewhere the other day, and I ate a piece of that, and, and then I happened to stick my tongue out. My tongue turned colors. I don't know what in the world that was all about. It never did that with mama's, you know, ice in her, my wife's ice in But, oh, brother, I, you know, I'm thinking, oh, God. But you know what? You can go buy that kind of stuff. But to get the good stuff, you've got to make it. I said to get the good stuff, you've got to make it. And this peace business, you've got to make peace. That means you've got to gather the components. Uh, and you've got to gather the material together that it takes to make peace. You know what one of the components are? A willingness not to prove your point that you're right. Even if you know you're right. I believe that truly right is, can be exemplified by being able to be right but not have to tell everybody in the world about it. And prove to everybody how right you are. What's wrong with being right quietly? I think, you know what? Peacemaker. I want to be a peacemaker. I want to be a peacemaker. Because you know what? On the flip side of that coin, the Bible says six things that the Lord hates in Proverbs 6. Seven is an abomination unto him. What is number seven? He that soweth discord among brethren. That's an abomination, something that God detests, something God hates. Then I read a little further and it says, The man that is hated by the Lord will be taken by a hussy. Or strange woman, whatever. And you know what? There's some good men that went down. And it wasn't because there's a whoremonger. It wasn't because there's a fornicator. It wasn't because there's doing internet pornography every day. It wasn't because there's visiting bad places. It was because they refused to make peace in their world. And because of that, it caused division. And division made God mad. And God said, because you caused division, I'm going to let you fall. Connect the dots, okay? The little game you played when you was a kid. Connect the dots. You'll find there's a picture there, darling. I want to be a peacemaker. I want to be a peacemaker. They tell me, they tell me one time, <laughs> Winston Churchill was approached by somebody and said, Sir, can you tell me, wh what do you think about that guy over there? I said, Oh, man, I think he's a fine man. Fine man, great statesman. I mean, quality father. They looked at Winston Churchill and said, do what? Do you know everything he's been saying about you? He said, well, yeah. I said, why in the world would you say all them good things about him? He said, I thought you asked me what I thought about him. Not what he thought about me. What's wrong with making peace? What's wrong with making peace? And you know what I found? Sometimes you have to look for something good in somebody. It's easier with some people than others. Some people, you've got to get one of the metal detectors that's got a four-foot deep reach, and you've got to search around a while and get the weed eater out and clear the grass and maybe dig with a shovel or backhoe or something, but you can find something good about everybody. Now, there have been times that I want to make peace with somebody, and I'd sit there and I'd think, now, what can I do? And I'd think for a while, finally the Lord would help me, and something would come, and I'd say, you know what I like about you? And I didn't do it like this one guy said. He said, you know what I like about you? One day brightened up. He said, what? He said, not a single thing. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> I'm talking about finding something good about them when you're wanting to make peace, and then taking that to them and say, you know what? I like something about you. I want you to know I appreciate this attribute in your life. That might be one thing out of the hundred and the ninety-nine be wrong. But you know what? Why don't you learn to make peace? Because God's going to give that blessing to somebody. I said, God's going to give that blessing to somebody. And I got a feeling if I make it in my world, I'm probably going to have it in my home. And I'm probably going to have it in the church, God's asking me to pastor, if I'm doing everything I can to make peace in my world. Can I tell somebody I want that blessing right there? Anybody want that blessing? 
Raise your hand. Ask God, give me the blessing that comes, oh God, only with being a peacemaker. Oh God, I want to be a child of God. I want to be a child of God. I want to be a child of God. Jesus' name. Now, you know what? Anybody can stir up trouble. Anybody can stir up trouble. I've known folks that they just, they just purposely work on stirring up trouble. I used to work at Dover Corporation in Tulsa. Big factory. had 180 employees, something like that. Big building, machines everywhere. And uh, <laughs> there were guys, there were guys that I'm telling you, their joy... And coming to that place was stirring up some. You cannot believe. There was a guy that used to be an inspector. I would run uh, barrels. I'd hone out barrels for uh, oil, barrel pumps for pumping oil up out of the ground. And um, he was the inspector. He'd run his light down him, his gauge down him, and he'd inspect them. And, but you know what he'd do? He did more than inspect because he'd get around, and that dude could come up with stuff. He could make up. He said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go tell, because I know that and I'll repeat it. I'm going to go tell him this big yarn, and let's see what happens. Listen, he'd go tell that one guy, and listen, it wouldn't be two or three hours, brother, and I mean it would be buzzing, the whole shop would be buzzing. So-and-so's wife's been sleeping with that one. <laughs> I mean, they'd come off with stuff. I said, oh, God. Well, you know, for his, old, his wife was sleeping with somebody. <laughs> Their home about come undone. I'm going to tell you, I want, I want that blessing right there. I want that blessing right there. You can't be a hothead and be a peacemaker at the same time. Because <clears throat> the Bible said a soft answer turns away wrath. Soft answer turns away wrath. And you know what? Here, remember, the Bible says, only by pride cometh contention. So you really want to find it down at the root. It's arrogance and pride that is the root cause of the absence of peace. Okay, we'll go on. Next verse. Next verse. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Some of you as home missionaries feel like literally you're in a place of persecution because of the things you deal with and the stuff you have to put up with week in and week out, week in and week out, week in and week out. And you know what? Paul said it. He put it in the book. He said, I've been in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. I know none of y'all's ever met any of them. But I did have a guy call me one time, and he said, he's just distraught. My God, Brother Chapman, the superintendent in the presbyter, God, they're trying to destroy me. They've done this and this and this and this in the church, and God against me and talking to my people behind my back. back, 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 back. And he happened to be a little north, where instead of states, they have provinces. So I... Uh, I sat there and pondered on that for a minute. I said, get your Bible. And the guy, he got his Bible and he opened it up. I said, I told him a scripture to read. And here's what he read. I said, read that loud. I want you to hear it. I want to hear it myself. And it's, he, he started reading it. said, if you see the violent perverting of justice and judgment in a province, think it not strange, for there is one higher than the highest that sees can I let you rest assured in one thing? I don't care how you're being treated or how you're being persecuted. I'm telling you right now, there's a blessing, friend, if you'll just keep your mouth shut and keep your face down at the foot of the cross. There's a blessing coming to you that won't come any other way than the fact that you went through persecution and kept a right spirit and a right attitude. Hey, listen to me. I'm telling you right now, there's something from God that you can't get by praying and you can't get by fasting. But you can get it by being persecuted and not retaliating. I want that blessing. Next verse. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall speak all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. And you know, I... Uh, I, why don't we just raise our hands and ask God, give me these blessings that are promised in the Beatitudes. Would you do it? Jesus, I'm asking you right now. 
I'm asking you right now. I'm asking you right now. Oh God the Lord, grant unto me these blessings. Grant unto me these blessings, oh God the Lord. Grant unto me these blessings. Grant unto me these blessings. But, you know, with all those blessings, with all those blessings that are in there, uh, Matthew chapter number 11 and verse number 1, uh, there, uh, there's another blessing. Somebody say that other blessing. And this is the one that sometimes we fail to remember. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now, when John had heard in prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. Now, this is his cousin, Jesus. Okay? This is his cousin. This kin, folks. Okay? John has been doing nothing but proclaiming and heralding the coming of the Messiah. Been doing nothing but literally trying to turn the people that were his followers to follow Jesus. That's all he did. He ends up in prison. Well, you know, Jesus... Jesus came and visited him, you know, several times. and No, he didn't. We don't have record Jesus ever one time visited John. Some of you feel like you're in prison and you ain't been visited. First thing you've got to do is change your mindset about where you are. You're not in prison. I said, you're not in prison. If God told you to go to that place and God put it in your heart to show up at that place, I'm telling you, you're not in prison. You're simply in the place where a miracle's happening and you hadn't seen it all come to pass yet. But bless your heart, it's going to come to pass if you'll stay put and you'll keep seeking God and you'll keep reaching out to God. It's going to happen. So he sent two of his disciples, next verse. And he said unto him, Art thou that he that should come or do we look for another? As boldly as he declared it. As boldly as he declared it, he, he got it, he started having doubts. And you can doubt whether you really, everything God said he was going to do in your life or not too. Next verse. Jesus answered and said to him, go show John the things which you do hear and see. Next verse. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. Watch this. Next verse. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Can I tell all of you home missionaries something? There's going to be times in your walk with God and in raising up a work for the kingdom of God that you're going to have every opportunity to be offended at God. And I'm telling you, this is all about faith and all of this benefit. But can I tell you something? There is a step beyond faith. And that's called trust. I'm glad for everybody the faith. I'm going to exercise for everybody the faith. But I'm going to tell you something. It don't always happen the way I had believed it was going to happen. But you know what? I'm not fixing to bolt and run either. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take that step beyond faith, and that is trust. When it didn't happen exactly how I thought it was going or when I thought it was going to. I'm not bailing out on God. I'm not bailing out on my city. I'm going to keep saying, I trust you, God. I trust you, God. I trust you, Jesus. After Job saying everything that he had done good, he said, Surely, surely I will die in my nest. And my days will be prolonged as the sands of the sea. And then he stands looking at ten fresh dug graves, having lost everything that he had. But all of a sudden something moved in him. And he said, I'm going one step beyond faith. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Yet will I maintain my ways before God. So I'm telling somebody, there's another blessing that you need to get a hold of. And that's the blessing of where you refuse to be offended at God. I told the story at Louisiana camp this year that I watched a woman. I watched her walk in the back door. Literally couldn't walk. People having to support her. Cane walk or something. I don't remember. She couldn't even walk. 
her teeth blackened from meth use. She stumbles down, gets to the front, barely even could make one foot go in front of another one. And they told me, they said, but Shatwell, she is eaten alive with cancer. Literally days to live. That woman gets up there. I walk down, I anoint her with oil. I pray for her in the name of Jesus. So help me, I didn't feel anything much different than any other time I'd prayed. But all of a sudden, that lady started going. I'm not talking about two weeks later. I'm talking about right then. She says, man, I'm feeling better. Well, she lays them things down, starts walking around. I'm talking was within days of burying. Man, she starts, listen, man, she gets happy. Her eyes brighten up. Listen, she, man, she walks out there nearly running completely. Called back a few days later. Been back to the doctor. There's not one trace of cancer anywhere in my body. And listen to me. Listen to me. She has never been back to the church in Okima since that day. I'll pass her in the grocery store. I'll see her in town. You know what she'll do? Healthy as a horse. And I watched another precious lady that never missed paying her tithes that never missed a service, that was a faithful leader in our church, uh, whose husband loved God, was a faithful leader, the service leader, powerful lady, knew how to pray. And I watched her get ovarian cancer. And I'm telling you from the day they pronounced it on her, I prayed every way I knew how to pray. I got everybody I knew how to pray. And 11 months later, I buried her. And I looked at Jesus and I said, what do you think? You let that woman live and all she's going to do is go do more meth uh, and live like a oh god but what in the name of god are you doing uh, and you know what all of a sudden the lord said i'm going to give you an opportunity to get a blessing that you didn't even know existed and that is when you say jesus i'm not going to be offended at you as to how you do your business in my life Can I tell somebody there's another blessing? I don't care if you built your church up to 50 and all of a sudden somebody backstabbed you and took it down to five. I don't care if it's happened 10 times. You could look at God and say, why does nobody else go through this? Why did nobody else? Listen to me, baby. It might be that God's working on more than just the number of attendance in your church. He might be trying to work something in you that he can trust you with mighty apostolic power. Can I tell you, let God God do it the way he wants to. Let him give you that other blessing. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. How many of you remember the story of the talents? The Lord didn't give her by the same amount, did he? You know what? It used to bother me when I'd see somebody with more talents than I had. I know it's never bothered any of y'all. Some guys walk into a city. They just hang a sign out there at church. They have a hundred next Sunday. <laughs> well, it didn't happen that way for you, did it? <laughs> well, how in the world does all this add up to fair? I thought he was going to no respect their persons here. <laughs> yeah, what happened? You know what? Why don't you just go ahead and get that other blessing? of saying, Jesus, I'm going to be everything you'll allow me to be. I'm going to get a hold of every bit of faith you'll allow me to get a hold of. But when faith withers in my hand, when faith slips through my fingers and it feels like it's gone, I'm going to take that second step and I'm going to say, I trust you. I trust you. I know what you asked me to do. And however you choose to do your business, that's fine with me. But I want you to know I'm going to be here. And it wasn't those that said, but Lord, we've done, we've cast out devils in your name. We've prophesied in your name. We've done many wonderful works in your name. He's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. So you know what? 
I'm going to let him do it his way. I'm going to let him do it his way. As an evangelist, uh, but anyway, the talents, the talents. Not everybody has the same amount. But you know what's amazing to me? The guy that had five, he came back and said, you know, Lord, I've, this is what's happened. He said, well done, you good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. The guy with two talents came, tells his story. You know what the master said? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you rule over many. Enter thou into the joys of the Lord. Do you know what the message would have been to the one talent man? The same thing. The same thing. The same thing. But he didn't like the way the Lord went about his business. You only gave me one. You gave that guy out of the town, out of the state. You gave him ten. How's all this right? You know what? You need to get your eyes off him, get them on Jesus, and start saying, I'm going to do everything I can with this one. And you know what the message from the king's going to be to you? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over many things. I'm talking about that other blessing. You can have it. You can have it when you refuse to be offended at God. Brother Dylan, I've never been called to Columbia, South America, and put 20 or 30 years of my life into it. And then my wife die of cancer, and I have to get the shovel out and dig the hole and build the box, fill the hole in, and then say words over. I've never had to do that. But there was a man that did. And when it was all said and done, he kept right on being a missionary, kept right on having church, and never reaped what he planted. But today, today, there's a thriving, thriving apostolic church in Columbia. Can I tell somebody this? I'm telling you, let him do it his way. Let him do it his way and don't be offended at him. Don't be offended at him. Let him do his business. I wants to do it in your life. Blessed is he who is not offended at me. You know what? In Okima, I never was super good at math because I didn't pay attention. <clears throat> Just a bunch of scribbling sometimes. But I'm going to tell you this. I know, I'm smart enough to know that if I spent the time that I spend on this phone and in visiting people in that town, that church would be bigger than what it is. I know that. In fact, this morning I punched it up just to look. And since the last, I don't know how long I've had this phone, <clears throat> a year, a year and a half maybe, but it says lifetime of how long I've spent on this phone. I looked it up this morning. 67 24-hour days plus 16 hours more that I've spent on this phone since I've had it. I said, well, God, why don't you allow me to build a mega church here? You know what? It ain't all about how big I build it where I'm standing. It's about doing the will of God. And it's about letting him do his business how he wants. And if he wants me helping people, if he wants me helping people outside of Okima as much or more than I help people in Okima, I'm going to let him do it his way. I'm going to let him do it his way. I'm going to let him do it his way. And the Tom Pattersons in my life that are free to call my phone, I'm going to pour everything I've got into them. I'm going to pour everything I can into them. You know why? Because I want that other blessing. I want that other blessing. And that is not being offended at the way he does business. The ticker tape parade was in full swing. The paper was falling. The crowds lined the sidewalks. Oh, the band was playing. The soldiers were stepping in unison. A young lady, 25 or 30, was standing right on the edge of the, right on the edge of the curb and just, I mean, caught up in all of it. She felt somebody bump into her and jostle her, and she turned and looked, and there was this grizzled-looking old man with a patch over one eye and a 
stub for a right arm, and he sh- kind of clumsily made his way up to the curb. And after kind of getting over her initial feelings about that, he, she looked at him and said, "Oh, I said, Mister, isn't this wonderful? The band playing, the ticker tape parade, isn't this awesome?" And that old veteran, his eyes kind of got a distant look for a moment. He remembered the splatter of a buddy's body as it exploded into his face. He remembered the blood of a comrade leaking through his fingers. He remembered death a thousand times over. And with misting up eyes, he turned and looked at that lady and he said, Lady, the band ain't always playing. The band ain't always playing. And the band's playing here. But when you get home, home missionary, you might not be playing when you get home. But I'm telling you, the same God that touched you here is going to be there. Don't you forget that. And the same God that spent every one of these messages telling you, you got to believe in yourself is going to be there to do for you what nothing else can do. So I'm telling you, get yourself straightened up and say, I am a man of God. I am a woman of God. And we're going to do it for the cause of the kingdom. Would you clap your hands to him? Okay, I'm 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 through. Hold on now. Where's my, where's my handkerchief at here? Dear Lord, how to lose my handkerchief here? I wasn't a magician. That thing disappeared, didn't it? Oh, here it is. I found it. So here's what I want you to do. This is in the front of my Bible. We're going to give you a copy of this. And it's something that was given me that Jesus told Tom Barnes to pray every day. Now, I don't know what you think about stuff like that, but if Jesus told Tom Barnes to pray this every day and he did it, I kind of want to know what I did. I I want to kind of, I'd kind of like to pray it, okay? And here's what it says. Well, you can read it. And he'd pray, God, give me a miracle heart, and then he'd say it. Give me a miracle mind. Give me, And it's all written out there, okay? On the back side of this paper is what Jesus told a, a dear friend of mine named Brother Lashley. He said, these three things I want you to do daily. Fellowship my presence, abide under my anointing, and behold my glory every day. These two things. And then this prayer right here. You'll have to tailor make this to suit your city. And to fit your city, okay? But it is a prayer that Jesus told me about a year ago that he wanted me to start praying. Folks, listen to me just a minute here now. Hold, let me, let me. Guys handing out papers, hold on just a minute. Stop so everybody can look up here. Just hold on just a minute. Listen, Jesus told me to pray this prayer every day. Now, if you're not going to pray it every day, don't start it at all. You understand me? Seriously. If you don't think you can do this every day, just don't do it at all. Just go on doing things the way you've been. But if you can pray it every day, start doing it. Okay? I got home. Jesus told me to start praying this prayer. And here's what he told me on the way home. He said, the church will now go to 400. Hadn't happened yet. But he said it, so it's going to happen. It's going to happen. He said it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But here's what he told me. He said, I want you to start praying this prayer. Now, I'm not saying that what happened in Okim is going to happen in your city when you start praying this. I'm just telling you what happened. Jesus told me to pray it, and I started praying it, got the church praying it. I copied these off and had everybody in the church. I said, I want you praying them every day. We started doing it. Within 10 days at Okima, we had three earthquakes, one tornado, and one hailstorm that had hail balls as big as softballs. I called Brother Wright, said something to him a little bit about it. He said, that's just a reaction in the spirit world. But you know what? After about that 10 days of me just keeping on the church, keeping on praying, it kind of smoothed out. And for the first time in 20 plus years, people from my city started just walking in the door saying, we want to go to church here. 
You know what happened? You know what happened before that? This is crazy. I could teach a Bible study in any town around Okima, and they'd get the Holy Ghost, get baptized in Jesus' name, line up to holiness, and sell their house and move to Okima. But so help me before God, I couldn't pray through one person in the city limits of Okima, and them last. I'm telling you, I got new babies running out, I mean, everywhere at home. Right now, we're trying to get them established, and they're from Okima. And it started happening when I started praying this prayer. Now, don't walk out of here and say, oh, Brother Shatwell, no, I'm just telling you, this is what Jesus told me to do, and I felt I needed to share it with you. If you can tailor make this for your city, change the names where your cities are, are involved, and start praying it. Now, if you're not going to pray it every day, don't start. You'll stir up a bunch of stuff, and then you won't keep it suppressed. But when you, when, you, when you pray this every day, and it's stuff that I've done, I've just never done it every day. So I'm asking you, home missionaries, give it some prayer. If you, if you feel okay with doing it, do it. If you don't, then don't do it. But I wanted to show that to you. I love every one of you home missionaries. You're the greatest people in all of the world. You're mighty men and women of God. And I bless you this day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I bless every home missionary. I bless every man and woman of God. Every pastor's wife that's grieving and hurting. Every man of God that's frustrated and oh God right now I bless them. I bless them. I, I say that the doors of heaven will open for them. I say the doors in their community will open for them. I say that a hunger, a spirit of the fear of the Lord will begin to reside in their city. I say that hungry souls will begin to come. I say that every stronghold will be brought down I say that every kept everything that's held the souls back, every strong man will be bound in Jesus' name, and the revival will come to their cities. I say it in the name and by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's give God praise. Come on, just clap your hands to the Lord and thank God for what you have felt, what you have heard, what has been imparted into your spirit. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody said hallelujah. How many has received something from the Lord today? Woo, Holy Ghost. Something has happened in the spirit today. Praise God. Praise God. Remember there's copies of all the messages of Apostolic Conference. Amen. In our tape ministry area. Also we have some sermons for this past year that uh, the church feels are the best of myself and my son. So God bless you. Amen. We're going to, don't forget, tonight.